Yeah. Uh huh. Prior employment. Wagner. Okay. What does the job entail? Uh, scrubbing toilets in the rain. How much is it? Two bucks an hour. Okay, it's better than your last job. You'll take it. All right. Hey everybody, I gotta go. Hey everybody, this is Dave. Uh, welcome to the Squirrel Hole again. Uh, my name's Dave Tomorrow, and this is Secret Squirrel One Two Three on Twitter and YouTube, the Bird App. Okay, welcome to my hole. Yeah. This sounds. I have a studio audience here today. So, uh, we're going to talk about some things that are going on in Ukraine. It's going so fast right now, I can't keep up. And some of these things that I'm getting are uh, not complete at this point, so bear with me. Okay, first of all, I'm going to start off with a little joke. Uh, SU-34, uh, SU-35, uh, two MI-8s and an SU, or an MI-28 walk into a bar. And I got nothing. After that, they crash and burn like me dating. Okay, so, um, or my marriage history. Okay, last time you went, ooh, you guys are all fired. Okay, so, here's what happened. As far as we know, uh, SU-34, SU-35, which SU-34 is a fighter bomber, SU-35 is advanced fighter, according to them, uh, and two specialized MI-8s, which are electronic warfare aircraft, and a MI-28 have gone down in the last uh, 36 hours. The two MI-8s and uh, SU-37, or 30, sorry, 34 and 35, all went down north of Ukraine in Russia. The SU-20, or MiG-28, MI, sorry, damn it. MI-28 went down in Crimea. Now, there's two theories going along. We're waiting to have them come out. Uh, Igor Gurkin said that the uh, aircraft up here were involved in a ambush where Ukrainians shot them down. Some telegram channels and everything are saying that their own forces shot them down. So either way, it's a win. Okay, so that's, uh, that's well over a hundred million dollars in aircraft lost and if all those aircraft went down that's almost, it's like last year's production in aircraft. Okay, so moving on. It's a great thing. Okay, so Ukrainian missiles that they have right now can hit right about to here in uh, Luhansk. Oh wait, that was yesterday. They can hit now, over to, all the way over to here. Uh, the, assume, it looks like the storm shadows that the UK just gave to Ukraine have uh, started to be used in the Luhansk area. But prior, Luhansk was very safe. It was never getting hit um, and uh, Basically, that's where they've been stockpiling stuff that's been out of high Mars range. Things changed yesterday. Uh, a food processing facility got hit that had a two-star general in it. Imagine that. And uh, the airport and some other places got hit. Also, if you look, the, the uh, storm shadows can actually hit the bridge. So it should be interesting hitting the bridge here soon. Um, and they can hit moving targets, which they're probably going to just wait for a nice big fuel, fuel train to go through and target the fuel train. That's what happened last time and uh, it took the bridge out for a little bit. So yeah, look for more storm shadows to show up. <coughs> Everything is now within range of the Ukrainian forces. And that's not counting the HRIM-2s, the new missiles from Ukraine that, will, that are probably in operation now. So the two of those together means anything in Ukraine is uh, able to get hit. Okay, Russian, uh, Russian 72nd Brigade has been pulled back again farther. Uh, the other day, uh, Ukraine captured three kilometers, three square kilometers. Now it's up to 17 kilometers. They're pushing, wherever they're pushing, they're, they give little pokes to the uh, Russians. And it seems wherever they poke, the Russians pull back and shatter and get pulled back even further. So it started with three kilometers the other day, now they're up to 17 kilometers. And second uh, core headquarters, looks like they got hit. Uh, they're still trying to figure that out. But Telegram's saying that several colonels and uh, some of the senior force was wiped out just a few hours ago. That's all right, as I call that a win-win. All right, now to our sponsors. Today's sponsor includes Prop wash. If you're having a problem keeping your aircraft in the sky and you just don't know why, buy some prop wash. 
You throw it up there and they have a nice safe landing on your aircraft. Okay, great. All right, so, boom. All right, next the item up for bid is Leopard 1A5, okay? A few months ago, um, I was critiquing the lack of stuff coming out of Germany. The fact that uh, the Germans kept saying, we have nothing, we have nothing, we have nothing. We have no armored vehicles, we have no tanks, we have no, nothing we can give to Germany or to Ukraine. And I consistently said, look, I know where the stuff's at. I know where the stuff's at. There's uh, more Martyrs, or more Leopard 185s, or more Leopard 2s. There's Fuchs, there's all sorts of stuff. There's like 600 Fuchs alone. And those are armored personnel carriers. And I got tagged with um, German hate speech. I was a germaphobe. Ich Deutsch sprache, so und ich wohne in Deutschland, wo es war Tiara. So I, I, I speak German. I lived there for 12 years. I know where the stuff's at. And all these people are like, oh, you can't get, you know, we have nothing left. That's bull crap. They've got enough, enough stuff. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, yesterday, they are handing, they announced they're handing over another 130, 40 more vehicles. They keep doing that. Keep, they keep finding stuff. This is to everybody in Europe and in the U.S. If you have old stuff that was designed for to keep to kick the Russians' butt, and you got you got it in storage, it costs money for you to have it in storage. Empty the storage facilities. Let it do what it was spot designed to do. Kill Russians. I'm sure in the end you'll, you'll figure it out. It saves money. All right, and don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because I know exactly where this stuff is stored and I do my research. So when people go, oh, they don't have those vehicles. Yeah, they do. They're in industrial storage. They're not actually in the military. They're in storage on the industrial side. Okay, so strikes in Crimea. Recently, uh, there are strikes happening all along the Crimea coast right here, down here on the other side of the bridge, uh, all sorts of places. They've been hitting the oil uh, fuel reserves and any uh, uh, reserves of ammunition. They know where it's at, they're hitting it. All right, so all along the front, they've been striking here, 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 uh, Bakhmut, down here, here, and all along the side over here, they've been hitting the Russian forces. What I think they're trying to do is they're trying to draw the Russian reserves up to the front to try and plug holes so that when the counter strike happens, all the reserves have been used up. And, what I, and uh, we've got some people complaining that all these attacks are using up the Ukrainian counterattack force. That's not what's happening. The Ukrainian counterattack force, which has the three cores, are still back here out of range. And what they're using is mainly the eight assault uh, brigades, the Azov, the Boundary, the, uh, the Steel, Kara, the Rage brigades. They're going in there, drawing out the Russians, killing Russians. And so the Russians are having to pl plug the holes with something and the TikTok brigades or TikTok armies coming up and they've already been hit pretty hard. So uh, that's what they're doing. They're using these guys right here to go in, draw out the reserves so that the uh, assault force, when it does cross the line right here, won't have as many people. Okay. So don't worry about that. There's plenty of, there's plenty of troops out there. Uh, counting all the Ukrainian army, National Guard, reserves, Police, um, border brigades, presidential brigade, all the uh, the volunteer brigades. There's about 165 brigades. So Ukraine is using about a third of what they've got right now. Russia is using up probably about 70, 80, 90 percent of what they've got. So when the hammer drops, it's going to get ugly. Um, I think the counteroffensive has already started the shaping maneuver, sh shaping operations. The the land is getting dry. It's starting to be able to support uh, armored warfare. And what we're probably going to see is the whole front of the whole front light up. And all of a sudden, you're going to see all sorts of electronic act activity. Nobody able to use phones or anything like that all along the front. And then you'll see the uh, counter strike happen. And when that happens, it's all about speed. Or in the army, it's called violence of action. All right, so that's what I got right now. Everything's changing. Don't or settle down. Grab your popcorn. This is uh, going to be a long one. Okay, so Dave out. Thanks much.